When he goes on the bus and he gets a lot of positive praise and he's maybe getting some tickets to take to exchange for something, he's going to work extra hard for you because he's getting something he really needs emotionally. Um, and I think you would see a real decrease in those behaviors. So what I would anticipate is you're calling on those parents less and less. And what goes on at home is Johnny knows the expectations on the bus are different than what he's doing at home. I know that's not exactly the ideal answer, but oh, I appreciate the reality of it is we can't change what the parents are doing at home. Um, but hopefully we can role model some great things. And maybe, like you said, that one kid, the bus ends up being this really nurturing place for them that they're not getting anywhere else. Maybe he's one of 30 kids in the classroom and he's getting in trouble there too and his parents are not doing a very um, promoting job at home. So. And two, I think one thing um, I noticed from teaching at Bus One too is you do have those parents, their child is perfect. I know my kids are perfect. Um, but I think too, when you do get that specific feedback um, from a teacher and they said, your child did this, you kind of feel like, wow, they're on my team. And hopefully those parents are like, well, they do believe under my child, he did X, Y, and Z, great. Oh, well now they're saying he didn't do this great, so maybe I do need to look at that. So that might help too. But. And sometimes it's inspirational for parents if you're giving them positive news. Like, this girl is doing this in my classroom. She doesn't do that at home. So now they're knowing, hey, they are capable of doing it. Maybe I can help them, you know, start introducing some of those same skills at home. So instead of calling out, no, James, turn around or you're going to sit by me, consequence, calling out the kids' names, instead of doing those things, let's just refer back. Let's remember, safety check penguins, let's remember to stay safe by facing forward. I see Julie, Ben, you're facing forward, nice work, let's have a cool start today. I mean, just something that's keeping it positive. We're, we're, the only people we're calling out are the people who are doing a great job. And the most important is that we say nothing when everything's going great, right? I do it all the time to my kids at home. They're fine. They're good. Great. Thanks so much. Yeah. But you don't say anything. What if you just went this whole hour on the bus and everybody was fantastic and the bus driver said nothing? It doesn't encourage the kids to do that again tomorrow, does it? They didn't get any attention. So if you said, wow, Rockets, you're all following our bus rules. Give your friend a high five. Woohoo! If we keep working this hard, we're going to get our third gold star this week, or whatever we're doing. But you know, something that's giving kids motivation to do what they just did again. And so that positive behavior piece really is this. Um, there can be something that we can help you guys implement, or you can come up as a training group to implement. That, oh man. Did you man? Oh, it was so cute. Too. Uh, <laughs> a, a, a general program for the bus department, uh, the transportation department as a whole, where buses are coming up with something that they're using to reward entire bus behavior and using some sort of ticket to, re to um, reward individual behavior. And these are something that, you know, bus drivers will be encouraged to make sure they're giving out tickets to all the kids, to kids doing a good job and targeting some of those kids who are likely to introduce some challenging behavior but didn't do it. So, you know, I might know that you three always ride the bus beautifully. You do a smack down, great job every day. But you might have a tendency to, you know, jump up and down. So I might give you two a ticket today, but I'm going to make sure that I give you one today because you did a good job. Um, so you're really focusing. This is a way to intentionally focus on the kids who are at risk of challenging behavior without making it um, without making it so obvious. And the same thing with these programs where you can um, act, give accolades to the bus as a whole and to individual students, the same thing could happen as a transportation department to give those same accolades to your drivers. How often do you talk to the bus drivers that are doing a really awesome job? Does it happen very often? I don't know. How often do you talk to the bus drivers who wrote incident reports and you have to go watch the video? You're probably talking to them all the time. Not that you're condemning them for what happened, but those are the bus drivers getting all of your time and attention, right? Yes. But maybe you have some amazing bus drivers 
who are getting nothing other than their paycheck out of what they're doing um, for, you, for the bus. So, go ahead. So anyways, like you said, challenge the buses. Maybe you have less than in three days. There's some magic number each bus is working for. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's going to be perfect. It's unreasonable to expect that you're never going to have an incident on the bus. Um, but maybe you guys have some number that is a, a goal, a stretch goal for people to get to. Um, I think some, some symbols, you know, what if there's stars? Or what if you had a rope? Um, across the bus and every month or you know if, you, if they met their goal and there was no power <coughs> any incidences and they made, made their goal they got to hang a little trophy this is a visual for kids they see something that they got a reward for and they're like oh let's get another one you know um, it could be something as simple as that um, I think um, the golden tickets like I said give them out to something for rewards the nice thing about the golden a ticket concept um, in t for the bus feature is that it's you're setting the kids up for another way to get more praise. So they're getting a ticket from the bus driver. They're going to be able to tell their parents they got a golden ticket. What if in each elementary school or something you have a little station in the office? Picture something more elaborate and grander. I just picked up things that I had in my house. But what if they get to take their ticket in and exchange it for a cool pencil or a smelling marker or something that the transportation department has made a little thing and they bring it up to the desk and they say, I got a golden ticket today. And then the lady at the desk is like, nice work, man, good job, pick out a pencil. Yes. And they get something else to do. <laughs> something like this that's set up just multiplies the number of positive accolades the kids are going to get for doing what you want them to do. And when Johnny sees that he didn't get one, and she got to go take one into the office, guess what he wants to do next time? Plus oh, you're working with the schools, and the yeah. schools are seeing that we're all coming together. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And I think you're, if you're doing something like this, you're pioneering this pyramid model that, quite frankly, is only being used at the moderate preschool level with only some of the preschools in your area. So you might be considered pioneers for launching something much more grand on the scale of celebrating the positive behaviors of kids. And then just sharing that information. I don't know if you guys have a newsletter. Maybe the schools have a newsletter where they can say, here's all the superstar bus riders we had this week. And they just put it in the newsletter so the parents can see. Um, maybe there's information that you guys send out in emails. Maybe the bus drivers have access to be able to send a, a quick email or a postcard out that says, so-and-so did an awesome job on the bus today. Any way that you can just spread the message, because kids are going to respond when I tell them that they did a good job, but what really accelerates their behavior changes is when I tell someone else about it. Vanessa, you wouldn't believe what Kendall did today. She sat so still at circle time. It's been so hard that she's been practicing, and she did it today. When I give my, this person praise in front of another adult, just send them over. Sorry, I'm like the question. No, right I love it. Go ahead. Um, what are your thoughts on? I like the positive behavioral system and awarding students for their good behavior. What are your thoughts on? Do you think it does a disservice by any means in the long run for these students that it gets wired into their brains that they feel like the only reason they're going to exhibit good behavior is that they're going to always get a prize for it. I mean, but I don't do think, think everybody's going to, he's not, I wouldn't suspect that a bus driver's handing out a ticket to every single kid on the bus who did a nice job. Maybe the bus driver hands out, I don't know, depends on how many kids are on the bus, maybe he hands out six or seven tickets that day. Um, so it's something they have to strive for, they have to work for. But no, I don't, I don't think you could ever praise a kid too much. And I don't think, if that's the reason they're working for it is to get pencil, then it's, you're motivating them to make the right choice, which soon becomes rote memory to how they act on the bus. 
So maybe this is something that only goes for the kids that are in elementary school. And if you keep on these kids long enough, you don't have to do this stuff when they're in middle school or high school because they already know how to act on the bus. These are things you can eventually phase out, but you're constantly getting a new wave of kids in and you're constantly getting a new wave of bus drivers in. So for you, I see it as an ongoing thing. Like for me in the classroom, I've set up a lot of skills and we're practicing them, we're working on them, they're hard but eventually we're gonna phase them back. But I'll never phase back the praise, and I'll never phase back giving positives to um, children. But what you can do is up the challenge level. So maybe, you know, maybe those three rules we had are super easy now, and you tell them, shh, you guys are so good. This is too easy for you now. So we added an extra rule now, or an extra whatever you want to be. And let's see if we can get that one too. So, so you can always add more. The challenge level is always going to go up. And obviously your expectations for a kindergartner on the bus might be different than your behavior expectations for a fifth grader on the bus. So how do they earn a ticket versus how they earn a ticket might look a little differently. But I don't think you can ever stop praising kids. They just so fun. So what would that do to a child's psyche, sort of like you're saying, hand out like six golden tickets. Our drivers will drive anywhere from 50 to 70 kids. It's really hard to look at all the good kids when they're trying to drive a bus safely. I mean, what if, like, DJ's really good all the time, but I'm too busy and didn't notice and I'm hurting his feelings because he's seen Jen's getting a ticket all the time. Well, I think that's something that we have to help bus drivers do. You have to be mindful of who you gave bus tickets to. Maybe they keep a little log so they remember for the next time. Maybe they just mentally kind of know who they gave a list to. But I just made up the number six. It could be whatever you want. If just to get this program going, you give a, a ticket to every single kid who was on the bus who did a great job, great. And then you phase it back to the kids who were working hard or you really noticed that they did a nice job for something specific. So it does, I'm just giving you examples. You guys can help to form it in however way it works for you. Obviously, you're the experts in transportation um, and you know what works best on the bus and how much time they have and, and what the kids are going to do. But I have to say, not giving it to everyone is the motivation piece. So I do. I have two year olds. At the beginning of the year, they cry. We sing a song. It has. We have eight kids in the class and five cops. They do it on purpose, so that they work hard to get that five props. They have things they have to do in order to get a prop, and it's okay. It is painful, and it kind of breaks your heart to see them crying. But on the other hand, they're they're striving, they're working for a goal. We don't want it to be where. Just, oh yeah, you didn't really screw up today, so here's a ticket. We want, it needs to be something meaningful. It needs to mean something. Like, I did it. It was hard for me, and I did it. So, I think, do you guys have more questions? I, I think what you really, I mean, it comes down to acknowledging the people that you're transporting. You know, you need to acknowledge, you need to know your kids, you need to know their names, and I think that's really a lot of this, too, because if you know who you've got, who is in your bus and who you've got on there, that that's how going to determine how many tickets you've got, who's doing what, you know, and, and that's the big piece. And I think we have a lot of drivers who just, they board, they, these kids board the bus and it can be overwhelming and there's 70 kids, but you know what, how wonderful is it to be a part of their lives? And I think we've, we're missing that goal. Mm -hmm. And I would venture to guess that if all these people who came and applied for the job to be bus drivers, they could have had a lot of jobs in the world that got them something to get benefits of, you know, of, of accommodating pay. But something inside them must have said, I love kids, or I want to I wanna be in a place where there's kids. So I, gotta, I would venture to guess that these people truly do want to have a relationship with kids, but maybe they just don't know how to get it. Maybe they were the kids who had a dysfunctional family at home, and their parents didn't. I've, I've, how many of your parents talked to you this way when you were at home? 
Minded it. Just <laughs> 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 I mean, truly, so how would we expect these bus drivers... This is all being videotaped. <laughs> <laughs> how would we expect bus drivers to know how to talk to kids that way when no one talked to them that way? They probably don't talk to their own kids that way. I mean, it's just... It's not easy to start talking to kids that way, but once you get in the habit of doing it, same thing as that rote memory. It just becomes the way you do it, but getting to that place where it's rote memory takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. so. so I don't know what your plans are for this, but I think it'd be great <coughs> if we could get these guys out to every terminal to do an in-service. Like we do our PhD program, and you know, we, we teach them all of this and stuff, and you know, I'm going to say most of our bus drivers and bus assistants are amazing, and, and they do this, you know, I mean, it's what they do. But we have those people that maybe if we just remind them that this is what they're supposed to be doing, um, I, I think it's excellent, because it, it's on the same basis of what we train right. and teach. I think we just need more reinforcement for some of those people that forget why they're here. Right. Why could we book an appointment? And then we get them on those <laughs> buses, those one-on-one -on -one buses, yeah. to say, yeah. you know what, I'm going to have you work with this team, and yeah. they're going to just show you some great pointers yeah. that, you know, you've got struggles, but I can't keep boarding the bus, and we can't keep looking at videos all day long. So you know what? We're going to have you work with them. So you can tell, they can tell you more on a one-on-one. -on -one you know what, I, I just I just don't get this kid sometimes and he knows how to push my buttons. So they're more like almost your little personal therapist that you can sit there and say, look at, I, I, you know, because they're like, hey, Josie, you know, they did this or whatever, but yeah, maybe if you taught them to say, I board your bus and these are some little techniques that we can And that might do. be a role that you come into as peer, and maybe you guys get peer and change, and it's something when you are reviewing something that didn't happen well on the bus, but you're looking at the videotape, maybe you are saying, hey, Okay, I, I recognize what went down and we have to address that. But what if we have handled the situation this way? That's kind of what we do with kids. We don't talk to them in the moment of, of when they're melting down and having a problem. That isn't the time to teach kids. It's the time to teach them after or before. And so same thing with the bus drivers is you guys can be their mentors as well in terms of redirecting them to a more positive way to handle the situation. Uh, we only have a couple more slides and then we'll kind of, it sounds like you guys are ready to get into the planning thing, but Vanessa can kind of wrap it up. So basically too, I mean, I think um, the fact on drivers, I think they'll be so empowered to have, to have that feeling of, all right, I just had this really hard, challenging behavior on the bus, but Maybe I don't need Josie to handle it. I have the skills. I can kind of look at it and step back and see why this child is displaying this child behavior because we do know every behavior is communicating. They're trying to tell us something. So they'll have these skills. They'll have a relationship with all the children on the bus. They'll have a better relationship with the parents on the bus. They're excited to come to work. They'll feel more prepared. They won't feel like, oh, here comes another day of screaming on this bus and these kids don't sit down. And I swear if it snows day, I'm going to crash in that awful feeling. Feel personally rewarded for a job well done, and they'll be encouraged and, and want to work harder. Um, so, sorry. Oh, yeah. So we have. So this is from a preschool who had it has implemented the pyramid um, practices in place. This is a little different than I know your community looks like, but she transports preschoolers. So um, this is just her testimonial on how she feels, some of what she does. Um, so we'll, we'll play that for you guys. So for, for, okay. Okay. My name is Jim, and I'm a preschool bus driver. Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about the pyramid system that I used to oh, institute here in the class. <coughs> the kids wanted to always be first, getting in line, going into the schoolyard. So I have their names up here in the front. They're on little magnets, as you can see. And um, every day, I switch them so that it's fair that each child gets to be first in their own turn. And it really works well. They don't like being last, but everybody likes being first. We continued that on this week. Um, we had pictures taken of each child and put them by, the, by their car seat. Um, all the students here sit in car seats, 
and uh, it really helps save a lot of time because I don't have to readjust the seat belts every time the child sits down. And it gives them a regularity that they find comforting to know just where they sit all the time. Um, this has been working out very, very well. Um, it doesn't take near as long to sit the children when they have assigned seating as it does when they can just kind of sit wherever they want to. Thank you for the pyramid system. Okay. So I think we're recording. So obviously that's a lot different than what you guys look, but just an example of how she kind of looked at her bus and said, okay, they all want to be first. They kind of personalized it into her own, what those children needed. Um, so And they used a visual. Exactly. Those kids, you know, I would have suggested it was a name with the picture because those were preschoolers. They probably can't read their name. But they don't have to ask or get antsy because they can see, ooh, I have only two more days and I'm going to be the next friend that gets off the bus first. Yeah. So, and even the car seats of where to sit, the, those visuals, we use them all the time in the classroom and I can't tell you how positive they are. It takes so much work away from your drivers when they don't have to constantly be redirecting people to what they need to be doing because the kids already know what to do and they can figure it out themselves based on the things you have supporting the bus environment. Yeah, and you know, I know they transfer buses and they change buses a lot. And if maybe if all those bus drivers are on the exact same page and they all have those same expectations and it didn't change from bus to bus, would really help those kiddos feel like, oh, same rules, okay, we got this, you know. Um, one thing I forgot to share with you guys, I found this online, but I had to share this with you. Just like how kids come in and do the Pledge of Allegiance, I thought it'd be kind of cute if maybe the bus driver is like, all right, are you guys ready? And maybe do like this little chant with them. When we ride the school bus, we follow all the rules. We listen to the driver who takes us to school. We sit down in our seats and keep the aisles clear. We use our mouse voices so the bus driver can hear. And then they can say something like, all right, Sharks, you ready? Let's go. And then they can start the drive. So it's starting off on that positive note. But you guys can keep this. I need you more copies of it, too. But I'll pass that around. Um, so basically, like, looking at next steps, how could these Pyramid Plus strategies help you guys? Start thinking about what, what do we want to see in our school buses? How could this help our drivers? Who would really benefit from this? Um, and how can we work? Um, how can we work with you to train your teachers, which are previously known as bus drivers and now teachers? So, if you guys just want to start finding out, what do you what do you guys think you guys can take away from this? What strategies would you guys like to see? <laughs> can we <laughs> like help you? No, I think every terminal should see this just to be reminded, and then maybe we can tweak our training program. The thing is, when we're here at uh, training center we're learning how to drive a bus then when they get to their terminals that's when they learn more of behavior management and I think we see this I need to get my team together and kind of see if we're all on the same page again because I know what was and I think that might need to be yeah reevaluated and maybe you know so we are teaching the same thing again because we do have four different terminals, and and now you know, as in so short of drivers, we have you know south going to the central, and you know, and I think it would help make sure we're on the same consistent same consistency through all of our terminals that we're teaching the same message for sure. And that's hard too on the kids, you know, consistency and drivers and having different drivers every day, and like yeah. you said, you know one driver varies so drastically from the other and so to have everyone kind of on the same page working together and to kind of get these ideas going through their mind and kind of <coughs> get a spark that, that mm -hmm. hey there are ways that we could better manage our buses you know with positive enforcement rather than you know what i see in the videos a lot is sit down sit down you know yeah. it needs to be better you know so that's just a good Thank you. It's just like imagine you think you're welcome. Imagine if you went to Safeway and King Supers, and you check out at King Supers, you bring your groceries to the front, you put them on the belt, and you pay for them, they get bagged, you go home. But at Safeway, you know, you pay for your eggs in the back, you pay for that. It's confusing, it's frustrating, nothing's the same, it's not cohesive. So I agree, I think that would be powerful. But it is, I mean, even if you go to two different grocery stores and the eggs are located in aisle four. Yeah, that's still like frustrating, that, exactly. You just, I hate coming to the store. It's yeah. like you hate coming to the stores that you're just so used to what you know. Yeah. And you like that little bit of calmness to get the eggs when you need to get them. But I think 
I think we do need to go ahead and implement this in our training, but I think it would be nice to be able to say, you know what, I've just got, I'm just seeing some stuff happening. Like we're all seeing it now. Like we're seeing right now all of our discipline stuff rising right now because we got the break coming. Mm -hmm. And we've got and it was a full moon. And yes. all of it. It's the truth. And we're seeing it more happening and more happening and then it starts to calm down. But I also think it's a contribution to our employees because they're getting burnt out too. Yeah. But we should all be okay.